Hi guys, so I finally finished Sea of Darkness and I didn't grab the game. Hold on. Literally, it will be just my luck that I'm like, I have everything and then I don't. Finally finished the game, Sea of Darkness. Um, the funny thing about this game is I'm learning Norwegian. This is not Norwegian in the game, we're in Iceland, but um, it's very similar to Norwegian, so, you know, but very different at the same time, so. So I'll read you the characters, show you who they are, and then tell you my likes and dislikes, so let's go. And I can't pronounce the last name, so we're just going with first names. Soren. Although Soren grew up 10 miles from Skiprot, he's considered an outsider and isn't treated very well by his fellow residents. His vast education and knowledge of all things Icelandic aid in his running of the cultural cent culture center and drive his fascination with local artifacts. He claims to be tired of hearing everyone talk about the treasure, but perhaps he's secretly plotting to find the treasure himself. So this is Soren. Also, he kind of looks like a professor my sister and I had and sounds like him. So it's really weird. Like, if you play the game, you'll understand why. Elizabeth. A born and bred local, Elizabeth helps Soren run the Ancestors Festival and controls access to the Herlikide. Could her recent breakup with Magnus have inspired her to take revenge? That's Elizabeth. I know it's kind of hard to see. My phone's charging, so I'm trying to bring it forward. So that was Elizabeth. Okay. So I'm going to say the, this guy's name the way they say it in the game, Magnus. Magnus is the captain working on the Herlikide's restoration. He was supposed to safely steer the ship into the town's port to kick off the Ancestors Festival. But when the ship arrived, it crashed into the harbor unmanned, with Magnus nowhere to be found. Is it possible Magnus located the treasure in an abandoned ship, or did something much more sinister cause his mysterious disappearance? Yeah. These are the best pictures I could find. This game is very darkly lit. Okay. Dagny. As the manager of the ship's restoration and a renowned treasure hunter, Dagny is furious with her business partner, Magnus, for disappearing. She suspects he went looking for gold, found it, and took off, leaving her behind to clean up the mess. Dagny hires Nancy to track Magnus down and bring him to justice. But could Dagny know something she's not letting on? I'm going to say the way they say this guy's name also in the game, Gunnar. Gunnar. A grumpy old sailor who yearns for the olden days, Gunnar is not shy about voicing his concerns regarding the way the festival is being managed. He doesn't care about treasure hunting and claims the town's traditions and history are what really matter. Could Gunnar be harboring a hidden agenda to disrupt the festival? Phone contacts. You know I talk about these. Ned Nickerson. Returning as a phone contact, Ned is always available to provide Nancy with any support or help she might need. Call him often and keep him up to speed on your adventures so that he can provide additional tips. Alex Trang. Alex is a contact at the Reykjavik Harbor Master's control tower. She and Magnus communicate by radio whenever he's on board the Herlikide. Could she have any insights to Magnus' disappearance the day the ship crashed? I'm sorry, she and Magnus. I'm sorry, I'm trying to say his name completely right. Um, and then we have another character, uh, Toomey, Magnus' dog. And here's a silly picture I found of Toomey. Uh, doggies, Doggy. I love doggies. Um, and that's all the characters that we're going to talk about. So let me pull up my handy dandy notebook. Okay. Sea of Darkness. My sister drew a ship up here. The Herlikai. All right. Whew. So letters and music, common theme. Dagny has a big annoyed face. I hate Dagny. Like people like her are just, uh, I just don't like, I don't like her. She's really rude and nasty. Um, ship model has a smiley face because I love the ship model and especially like the cannons exploding and things like that. It's so fun. Soren's, uh, also I have swords dialogue has a laughing face because it's just funny because he's like, I have all this stuff in here. Also, I have swords. Um, 
And he says another quote that's funny that says, nothing says I love you like a new murder tool. This is laughing because he's saying, you know, they have weapons for every occasion. And he's like, nothing says I love you like a new murder tool. So it's funny. Um, guess the words language game. That has a smiley face. I like it. Also, that's where the Norwegian comes in because some things are like the same or like similar. So I was able to get them. Soren has a eh face. Like, I don't really know how to feel about him. Like, I feel bad for the way everyone treats him. But at the same time, like... He reminds me of that professor and I didn't have a problem with the professor my sister did and um yeah I don't know how I feel about him Gunnar has a laughing face because he's so freaking hilarious I love Gunnar so Gunnar so much excuse me Elizabeth has an annoyed face because I feel bad for her and like I get like why she's doing what she's doing but at the same time like girl calm down like we're here to help not here to hurt Alex has a smiley face because she's just so cool and interesting and a procrastinator like me. Uh, Bert has a laughing face because Bert is so freaking hilarious. The chicken story also has a laughing face. Bert has a chicken and so they're trying to find out what to name it. And like, you know, he was talking about how his roommate had a bunch of chickens and, you know. So here, Lakaid, the ship has a smiley face because I love going around the ship and seeing all the things. I'm really into like ships, like big ships, like the here, Lakaid. I'm really into big ships and trains. Like those are my like nerd things that I nerd out about. Gunnar's story uh, has a crying face because it's really, really sad. Um, if you want to know, his wife and daughter were in an accident and they didn't survive. And it's very, very sad. Um, Ned's older sister has a big annoyed face because it's in his voicemail that he has an older sister and the number doesn't exist if that's who's calling him. And we just never get clarification on what happened with his older sister. Um, Magnus has a little smiley face because I like Magnus. I don't see any problem with him. He's funny. He's witty. Uh, Magnus at the end has a laughing face because when we don't know how we're going to get out of the ice caves, he breaks through some of the ice and just goes, hello. And that's how Nancy finds her way out. Um, and the one who does Elizabeth's voice, um, sings the credit song that has a small smiley. That's just kind of like a spoiler for you guys that the word I couldn't keep is sung by Elizabeth's voice actress. And I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's interesting thing I wanted to tell you. Also, I am so, so hungry. Like I have such a bad headache. I'm feeling hot. I should probably eat. Um, but yeah, so we have Midnight in Salem next. It may not be out by next week, but like I said, the podcast episodes are being uploaded bi-weekly so you're getting me weekly and then you're getting the podcast bi-weekly again since these nancy drew videos will be taking longer to come out this point forward you might want to go and watch the podcast i'll link it down below simplicity with me and my best friend those will be coming out more frequently because it's bi-weekly when we put them out I will play Midnight in Salem, which I have played before. That one just might take a little longer to come out because it is a little longer of a game. And you guys will also be waiting until I play Mystery of the Seven Keys to get that out to you guys. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys um, whenever I post a video. Oh, forgot to tell you, before I leave... Um, I said this in the other video, but if you didn't watch the Jonah Murray video, I'll say it here. In October, um, since we usually do the rating horror movies, since I haven't had time to watch a lot of horror movies, instead we're going to be, um, on Wednesdays, we're going to be reading creepypastas, um, because now that I'm out of school, I have more free time, so... Wednesdays, we're going to be reading some of my favorite creepypastas. I'm compiling a list and discussing those. And then on Saturdays, I'm thinking about talking about the dangers of 3 a.m. challenges. Um, back in the day, I used to watch Sam Goldbach's 3 a.m. challenges. Um, and now that I am... Now that I've like really like delved into being a psychic and I'm really like 
basically like, um, what's the word? I'm basically like, um, not accepting that responsibility, but like, I, I'm kind of like accepting that I am a psychic and that, you know, things happen to me that are like paranormal and spiritual and things. And I rewatched those videos with that in mind. And I found a lot of the dangers um, of doing these things. And so I wanted to bring awareness to you guys. Maybe I can find the 3am challenges he did and talk about why you might not want to do them. Um, again, it's fully your decision. Just make sure you are protected when you were doing it. And I also want to make a video the day before Halloween. I'm going to upload a video talking about, you know, ways to be safe when you're using a Ouija board. I know that, you know, everybody uses Ouija boards. They're sold at toy stores, which I don't necessarily agree with, but a lot of people use a Ouija board and sometimes nothing happens and you think you're automatically safe. I just want you guys to know some extra things you could do. Make sure if you're gonna play with a Ouija board, you read the rules and you follow the rules. Not only if you follow the rules, but you have protections such as certain crystals and candles and you have a salt circle and you find ways to protect yourself. I'll go more in depth about this when I make the video, but I just want to let you guys know, I know on Halloween, the spirits are alive and a bunch of different spirits come out to play and it's very exciting and you might want to play with a Ouija board because it's exciting and everything. But I just want you guys to be 100% safe, 100% sure of what you're doing. So that's why I'm just going to make the video talk about the dangers of the Ouija board. But I've been talking way too long now. Again, I do want to point this disclaimer out about Ouija boards. I will never play one just because it's not my type of thing that I am interested in doing. But I want to put out this narrative. I don't think the Ouija board itself is evil. The board itself is not evil. It's not demonic. The board is just the Ouija board. But sometimes you can communicate. It's a telephone. Telephone. You never know who's going to come through. Sometimes what you are talking to or communicating with is not always a nice entity. So I just, that's why I want to warn you that if certain things are happening on the Ouija board, no. So I just want you to have the protections in place just in case things were to go bad and you can know what to do. Um, but that's all. I just wanted to give you that kind of disclaimer. Um, also, if you guys want me to talk about any certain creepy pastas, you can leave them in the comments down below. You can email me if you guys want um, me to talk about any certain 3 a.m. challenges that hopefully won't get me haunted if I talk about them, please. Um, you can leave those down below or email me. Um, my email's down below, like always. And if you guys want me to tell any of your personal ghost experiences, I still have that ghost um, series on my channel that... Um, I haven't told a story on in a while. I should probably uh, get back to doing that. Um, but anyway. To who? Holy shit, guys. Siri just turned on. That scared the shit out of me. Anyway, um, that means I've been talking for too long. Okay, guys. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I forgot to show you guys. So there's the ship, the hero look hide, and here are all the smiley faces. There you go.